Isn't this one of those great stories from Scripture with the Super Bowl just a week behind it, behind us with its glitz and its light show and all the halftime special effects? You can hear this story and realize that God had a way of putting on some pretty flashy shows as well. And we love that. And you can close your eyes as the story was read and conjure up an image of Jesus' clothes turning whiter than white and his disciples being dazzled by the sight. One other reading of the story says that Jesus' appearance was brighter than lightning. Now, we know that lightning is pretty bright. I read that a bolt of lightning is one of the most powerful forces on planet Earth, that every time a lightning bolt strikes, it discharges about a trillion watts of electricity and generates a temperature of about 20,000 degrees centigrade, which is hotter than the surface of the sun. Anybody who manages to radiate energy and light like a lightning bolt is mighty powerful and mighty bright. This was quite a deal. But with this hot ticket light show going on, Luke tells us that the disciples were having a hard time staying awake. Can you imagine that? They were heavy with sleep. Can you imagine that? No, of course you can't. But you have to wonder, how could that be? How could anyone be drowsy, even just a little bit drowsy, when such a spectacle was taking place right before them? Now, it would be nice if we could duplicate the lightning brightness of Jesus for you here this morning. I'd love to be able to do that. Unfortunately, we don't have enough sunglasses to go around, and our budget couldn't quite cover the spike in the utility bill. But today, I promise you that we're going to have a lightning bolt experience anyway. Our lightning bolt bright event is going to take place right in front of you as we come to the communion table today. It's true. There's not one person here whose life should not be changed by what happens around that table. This table tells us just how much God loves you. It's a reminder that no matter how far you've wandered, no matter how far you've strained, no matter how sleepy and unaware of God you might have been in your life, God's love for you has never diminished. Talk about a lightning bolt. That should strike each one of us where we live. After the light had faded in the story, and the disciples had shaken the sleep out of their systems, and after Peter, true to form, made a comment that showed how little he really understood about what was going on, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings for you, for Moses, and for Elijah. Then a voice came from the cloud that surrounded them. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Now, how can it be, following on one of the most dazzling visual spectacles that has ever taken place on this planet, that the bottom line from God the Father should be, listen to him. Listen. Why should it be listen and not look? Why go through this razzle-dazzle, this bright as lightning stuff, if the whole incident ends up being more about ears than it is about eyes. It's not what I would have expected to hear the Father say. It just doesn't make sense to me. I thought about a great line from the Ghostbusters movie. Maybe you remember that one. I'm afraid to ask their confirmation class if they see a movie, because they never see any of the movies that are important to me. <laughs> But I think about that line in Ghostbusters where the heroes are checking for evidence of paranormal activity in the basement of a college library at the beginning of the movie. And they're standing in front of this floor-to-ceiling stack of books in the library stacks, reminiscent, we're told, of the Philadelphia mass disturbance of 1947. And Ray hushes the chat and says, listen, do you smell something? <laughs> now, when someone to me says, listen, don't you, you don't expect to be asked what you're smelling. The two don't go together. And after what the disciples had seen on this mountain, you would think that God would say something like, look, and never forget this picture of my son. 
But instead, God tells them to listen. They were all set to do what they thought would be a great thing for Jesus. To honor him and his two guests, Moses and Elijah, with building these places of shelter. They were all set to be caretakers of a new religious shrine on the mountaintop. But the voice says, listen. Listen to my son, my chosen. Listen. Wouldn't we all be a lot better off if we would spend a little bit more time listening to what God is saying instead of rushing off to do what we think or assume God wants us to do? Now, some of us are better listeners than others. I am somewhat challenged in that area. Jan tells me that I don't always listen. At least I think that's what she said. <laughs> And I also have this terrible habit of rushing to complete someone else's thought or sentence instead of listening to everything that they have to say. And I feel I might have a lot of company in that area. Husbands, you can raise your hands if you're with me. We are in a culture with short attention spans and even with shorter listening spans. We like to say, tell us quick so we can get at it, so we can get on with our lives. And so the 30-second sound bite was born. But the word from God was not, this is my son, my chosen, follow him, but listen to him. And when we listen to Jesus, what do we hear? We hear him cutting through the crud and the clutter of the culture and the tradition and speaking clearly to us just as he did to those religious good guys in the reading from Matthew's Gospel. Telling us, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. How would your world be different if you listened, really listened to what Jesus said before you went out and did what you assumed that Jesus wanted you to do? This familiar passage raises a lot of questions. Maybe the sleepiness of the disciples is a reminder of how often they missed the glory of Jesus when it had been shining bright in front of them day in and day out throughout his ministry. Well, the truth is, perhaps they did not see, need to see the visible glow of Jesus to display his glory. His glory shined for those who had eyes to see it just as brightly when he talked to the lonely prostitutes or the outcast lepers, when he saved wayward tax collectors, when he offered forgiveness to those people who had never heard a forgiving syllable in their whole lives, the glory was there too. And it's still in the church today and beyond the church. And we're encouraged not to sleep through it. Is there ever a place where the phrase, you snooze, you lose, was applicable? There it is. And we can give the disciples a hard time for keeping this vision of the glory and power of Jesus to themselves without even being told to in this passage. But maybe we should turn the camera onto ourselves. How often do we keep silent about the great and awesome truths of Scripture when we celebrate in church on Sundays and then fail to mention that in all the weekdays that follow? And does it seem strange to you to hear God follow up this visual display of advice by telling us, that we should listen and not look or do. And maybe that's because we too get caught up in that outward frame of the power and the glory of Jesus. As the world defines all those things, maybe that gets in the way of our truly listening to what Jesus says, especially about humility and sacrifice and being servants to the lowest of the low who live in our midst today. Listen, Jesus says. Listen and then love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Listen. Hear my invitation to come to this table, Jesus says. <coughs> Listen. And then let the light of Jesus and Jesus' love 
shine through you for the world to see. Amen. Gracious God, speak to us and then give us ears to listen. May your light shine through us. As we hear your call to come to this table, help us to listen, to hear your call to go out to that world that lays beyond the doors of this sanctuary to serve you with joy in Jesus' name. Help us to listen.